We commonly appeal to statistics to prove our point. Quite often, we misuse it or see how others exploit terms like mean and median to prove their point. One guy named Tyler Vegan took this premise to an extreme. Using open source data, he identified several absurd correlations. Very strong correlations. Common sense tells us that we should not regard these results as meaningful. Which is why correlation does not imply causation principle is central to any research. But what should we do when common sense is not applicable? Perhaps we should measure more than just correlation. Mean, variance, sample variance, linear regression. This is already quite a lot. So if I give you particular values, the data set with such properties should be unique, right? Well, no, because Francis Enscomp showed in 1973 that there are at least four drastically different datasets with the same statistical metrics, up to several decimal places, of course. Thus, if you only have the numbers, you know very little about the true distribution. A more vivid example of this phenomenon was developed by Justin Mateka in 2017. He was able to start with a random picture of a dinosaur and change it continuously to other shapes while maintaining the statistical properties almost unchanged throughout all transformations. He also demonstrated it for one-dimensional datasets. The lesson we can draw from all this is you should always visualize your data. This is a workable advice for one, two or three dimensional datasets, but in reality data can have thousands dimensions. For example, a picture is characterized by its pixels, so a simple Instagram image will exist in one million dimensional space. And if you were ever interested in data science, you know that methods from differential geometry, vector calculus and topology provide the main tools for working with such complex data. That is, they help understand datasets geometrically, not statistically. But all of this does not imply that statistics is meaningless. In fact, the weakness that Enscomp identified can be turned to our advantage when we want to make our data confidential. Consider moderation problems that platforms like YouTube are solving using machine learning. A social media platform wants to successfully identify and block malicious content, but it does not want you or anybody else know how it does it, because you can otherwise adapt your content to trick the filters. One important aspect of this problem is to make a training dataset opaque. In 2007, Netflix launched a contest for creating a better recommendation engine a dataset containing 10 million film reviews from 500,000 of Netflix users was published for anybody to analyze it and create a better algorithm. Obviously, Netflix could not disclose users' names or any other sensitive data, so they anonymized users by assigning them with numerical IDs. But in 2009, two researchers used Internet Movie Database to identify most of the users in the Netflix dataset and disclosed their personal information. This resulted in several lawsuits filed against Netflix because they did not make the information sufficiently anonymous. So the problem of preserving confidentiality is obvious. And researchers are learning to transform datasets without affecting their statistical properties, so the analysis can still be carried out. Statistics is both the problem and the solution.